Hi, hello. Hey, what's going on, Tommy? It, this is Randall. Yeah, what up, bro? Hey, man. Just want to let you know, Randall, this call is going to be recorded and potentially uploaded. Cool? Nope. No, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So how can I help? So pretty much, I just wanted to, like, know exactly what accounts I need besides my regular stock and retirement account. Because I know you can have multiple accounts. You know what I'm saying? I know you speak okay. about that a lot. So I just want to know exactly how many retirement accounts I should have or how many. Because I got, I got M1 Finance. I got... um. I got Weibo, I got TD Ameritrade, and I use Better. Okay. So, all right. So, as far as, for example, the first question, the answer is it all depends on what type of investor you're going to be. At the end of the day, whatever brokerage you pick doesn't really matter. They just do one job, which is basically help you buy stocks, and that's about it, right? But it's all about, for example, do you want to be a stock picker or do you just want to basically get the average gains? Okay. Like investing into index funds and into mutual funds. Like, what do you want to do exactly? Stock um, pickers, by the way, like they pick and select individual stocks. Right. So I'm already heavily invested into index funds. Like, I haven't copied your uh, chart. I mean, your pie on Emerald Finance. Yeah. That's one of my passive, um, how you say, like reoccurring uh, investments. Yeah. Every week, $25 gets invested into that pie right there. Okay. So... Um, I just wanted to know more or less, like, should I be doing more than one account or should I just be focusing on one? You know what I mean? Like how much, what, what do you do for work? So right now I've been out of work since, you know, the whole pandemic. So I'm on unemployment. Uh, so I'm basically just okay. using my unemployment to invest and set myself up for when I go back to work, I have all my foundation set. You get me? All right. So let's answer that first. Right. Um, Tommy, I'm on unemployment. Should I be investing? The answer is no, okay. right? Here's what you should be doing right now. What I would be personally doing is I would pause all my investment activities and I would just save up just for emergencies right now and use this money to kind of like get you around so you can actually get a job, right? Um, the, the ability that you have to create income is what's going to basically create wealth for you. So if right now you spend your money, for example, on investing, but then all of a sudden, for example, you can't get a job and you need cash because unemployment doesn't hit you as much as it does, then you might have to go in and dig into your entire like um, investment account. That's why I don't recommend investing right now. So I recommend, for example, you have a little emergency account. It's just what I would do personally. And my mm -hmm. priority would not be investing. It would just be, for example, trying to find a job. Make sense? Okay. Yep, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you have any debt right now? Um, no, nah, just like a little bit of student loan, like about 6K. That's really it. It's a lot. But, yeah. I mean, not, not as much, lot, but, bit, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so the steps that I created, right, which is basically, um, the four steps of financial freedom is basically the first step is you got to get rid of the debt first, all the debt except the mortgage. The second step is you save up for emergencies, three to six months. The third step is you start to invest 10, 20% into retirement accounts, and then also save up to buy your own property. And then the fourth step is you kind of just get to enjoy life. So right now, the step that you're on is just step one, right? Which basically means you save $1,000 in case anything happens, and then you focus on paying the debt. That's really what you have to do right now, because the idea is if you have student loan debt and you pay four or five percent on that and right now you're not being charged interest. I understand that. But when you do get charged interest and then, for example, you're investing over here into index funds or ETFs, they make you maybe 10 percent after inflation of the taxes and fees. You're going to be averaging out. So it's best to basically cut out the entire debt, removes all the payments and then just frees up a lot of income for more investing. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so that's that's okay. So that's what I would do right now if I'm unemployed. Now, however, what what do you what do you, what what did you do for work before the whole pandemic and stuff? Uh, I was in like adult daycare center. I was helping like the elderly people get to and from there every day. But since it's closed down, I can't really work anymore. So. So you were doing adult. You were working for an adult health care center as like uh mm -hmm. like transporting people. Mm-hmm. Okay. You ever consider like um becoming like a homemade? Mm, not too much, because to be honest with you, during the pandemic, I just have been picking up on a lot of side hustles and a lot of side jobs. I actually wrote you mm -hmm. months ago to try to get a, a call, but that's besides the point. Um, 
Like you, you try know, to go palace what? flipping, like palace flip, like you know side jobs, like palace flipping. Like I'm starting to get into all of that. So flipping was, what? Palace? What does that mean? You know, like the, the buying the liquidations and stuff. Oh, pallets. Okay, yeah, understood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So me and my buddy had we were gonna go in together and try to start a little business over here. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, as you know, that trying to find the right distributor and going about that is not as easy. As you can this. just go to liquidations.com and so on. But here's what I'll tell you, right, um, Randall. If I'm you, and in your current position, do you have a degree, a license, anything like that? Nah. Out yeah. Of college. How old are you? Twenty eight. Yeah, so you're twenty eight years old. You're pretty young, which is awesome. It is like four years from now, two years from now, you could have like a whole like um trade job or degree or whatever you want to have. You know, the biggest thing, the biggest factor, success when it comes to like financial freedom is a big part of it is like your income. So if you have no income to work with, it's gonna be a problem. Right. And if you're trying to build like side hustles and try different things out, that's fine. But you're going to need, for example, a secure source of income. So what I would do if I were you, I was I would do the top 10 rule. Right. The top 10 rule basically means I'm going to write down the top 10 careers that I would love to have. Right. Just the top 10 careers I would love to have. Now, once I write down the top 10 careers, I'm going to start crossing off and crossing off and crossing off until I get to the top three. But before I cross off, I got to do all the research on every single career. So if in there you have, for example, IT management or whatever it is, well, I know, well, it takes four years. I have to go to this college. I have to do this. Um, it'll cost me this much, but I can make this much. The job is growing by this much. Like you do like a whole research paper on every career. So that way you have all the information you actually need. And then once you cross off and cross off and cross off and cross off, when you hit the top three, just pick the one that you like the most, because I'm pretty sure your top 10 careers, they're all going to make you a good amount of money. So picking the one you like the most is probably going to make you like a lot more happier. Does that make sense? Yeah, that definitely does. Yeah. Look, man, you sound like you're very entrepreneurial, just like um, just like I am. And like also like I was back then. But the idea is, you know, you also need like um a good source of income. So yeah. before I was doing the whole YouTube thing and making passive income, all stuff, I had jobs, right? And they were pretty much like very predictable because I needed predictable income in order to fund everything I wanted to do. And my big mistake was, Randall, that initially the the jobs that I picked, I hated them so much. But you have the opportunity where you get to pick the ones that you actually like and have fun while you're doing the whole thing, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I see what you're saying. Because I... Cause I I do forex as well. Like I, I'm a trader as well, so a lot of people have been telling me to make a course and start monetizing my skills between that and all that's the not other that's that's not my game, right? No. Um, when it comes to like forex trading, day trading, options, all that stuff, it's not my game. Gotcha. Right? Because what I do is more like um things that can give you predictable incomes that have been proven and so on. Forex trading is like currency trading, right? So it's kind of like a full-time job. There's nothing passive about it whatsoever. And a lot of the people that make money in it make money from like courses and trying to look a whole MLS system behind it and stuff like that. Again, yeah. what you want yeah. is predictable income, my friend, right? That's going to be the source and the seed capital to build you more passive income. So let's just play this out, right? Again, you're 28 years old. You are the choices you make. So let's say after this call, you say, well, I'm going to do all this research. I found this trade job or this career or this license or or this college degree or whatever. There's so many jobs out there that can earn you at least $40,000 per year. I'm not talking about becoming a lawyer and then spending the six, eight years in school. No, there are a lot of jobs out there you can do in two, four years, right? You got to do all the research. So now four years from now, you're 32 years old. You were still making money on your way there. Now you're earning forty to sixty thousand dollars per year. You have sixty k coming in. That's predictable income. You know it's gonna come in. You also enjoy your job. You're able to not. By the way, when you're going to college or trade school, what are you gonna do? Just make sure you have a job. Apply for scholarships, and the goal is to graduate debt free by using all your money to just pay for the degree. So when you graduate, you're fully debt free. Now you have sixty k. You're also debt free. And on top of that, you can sell for emergencies in one, two months because you have that much income coming in. And then you can just start investing 10, 20%. But 20% of $4,000 per month is a lot more different than, for example, unemployment, which we're getting right now. Make sense? Right. Yeah, definitely yeah. does. 
And then after that, once you start investing that 10, 20%, you say, okay, let me, let me keep doing that automatically. Like you have it set up right now. And let me just save up to buy my own property. You know, so I save up that 10, 20% for the down payments. I'm going to buy a property on a 15 year mortgage where the payments, including the mortgage taxes, maintenance, everything included is not going to be more than 33% of my monthly income. That way your shelter costs, not more than one third, you're able to put in extra money towards a mortgage. And instead of finishing, for example, in 15 years, you finish for example in like um, eight to 10 years. So now by 40, you own a house, which is fully paid off. You have a great career that you actually love, and you also have a lot of money and passive income because you've been investing for the past 10 years at the same time. Make sense? Yeah, definitely. The only part I'm going to ask you for advice in, bro, is this whole career thing. Bro. How do I, because, you know, I'm coming off of a whole year and a half of start working on your, you know what I mean? Be your own boss, yeah. be your own boss. You, you know, I've been on YouTube, you know how it is. I've been on YouTube, I've been on I understand. YouTube. So I when I come off of to be slapped to reality with this call, it's like, all right, whoa, it's I not, it's not, it's not slapped to reality, right? Careers are great. If I wasn't doing YouTube, I'd probably be a financial advisor. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The perceived idea is that the only way to be successful is to be an entrepreneur. That, that you don't. It's not like you've got a career and you can't try something you actually like. You can, you can have a full blown career. And in your free time, but like, I want to practice this or build this business. Once the business builds up to be, for example, um, over your income or over six figures, you're like, okay, I'm going to, like like I did, right? I graduated as an accountant. I got a job, all this stuff. But once my business made me more money, I stopped that job. Once my youth made my money, I stopped that business, right? It's all about you level things out. And you got to do things that you actually want to do them. Not because, oh, it's all about, I don't want to work for somebody else. That's why I say, for example, you got to make sure you pick a career that you actually like the most. However, Tommy, how do I pick a career? You ever seen Game of Thrones? Hell yeah. You saw the whole thing? Hell yeah. All right. That was like 40 hours. All right. So you got to yeah. dedicate at least 40 hours to find a career, bro. Same thing. So if yeah, you're willing to, <laughs> I caught you, bro. I caught you. you so if you're willing to spend time like on Game of Thrones or whatever, spend that same amount of time just like researching that top 10, bro, and do like all that research. Right. So I got the top one job right here might be like IT management, whatever it is. And by the way, you can go to laborstatistics.gov. You can go to top 10 jobs, top 10 trade jobs. Just do like a full have fun with it. Right. And then you pick one based on your research. And the one you pick, you just dedicate yourself to that. When people tell you about four. Look, man, the most important thing when you're first starting out is protecting your capital. Because whenever you're risking it with Forex trading, it's not like you lose money and then you're like, okay, it's fine, I'll, I'll do it again. But it's more like you're losing a lot of time because per hour, you might make $15, $20 right now, maybe even like less. So that means every time you lose $20, you just lost two hours of your time. So you gotta make sure you're protecting your capital. And if I tell you, well, yo, Randall, you can go ahead and basically invest $20,000 into a career, maybe get a degree or license, but then the first year you'll make $40,000 or $60,000, that's 100% return. And it's only eight hours per day and you actually like the job. So if you sleep eight, you work eight, that's 16, right? Plus two for like travel or whatever, that's 18. You still have another six hours to work on whatever side hustle that you actually wanna do. But one that you actually understand. One, you can say, well, I fully think that this is gonna make me money and it's actually passive because I wanna protect my money. And you gotta take advice from people that basically are, you know, that care about you also, but have have results that you actually want. So if you see somebody with um with the four results that you want, right? And they're like, I got this car. And you find out, oh, the car is leased. Oh, I got this fancy house. Oh, the, the car, I mean, the house is actually rented. Oh, I make so much money from Forex, but they actually make the money from courses. You don't wanna be associated with that. You know what I mean? You want something that's actually gonna provide a service to somebody that's actually gonna help them in some way. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely does. Yeah, bro, but look, you're 28 years old, you're super young, by 32 is a whole different story. You just gotta put your head down, get to work, pay all this debt, and basically pay for your career and all this stuff, and that way you're good to go. You have a good income. That's the whole idea, whether it's trade school, whether it's college, whatever you wanna do. Okay, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely. And don't see it as settling or anything like that because you're not settling. 
you know, the big thing is that what do you, when you picture financial freedom, what do you picture? Honestly, man, just being able to. All right. When you ask that question, what exactly do you <laughs> like? You get what I'm saying? Because, bro, financial freedom for me is being able to wake up every day and play video games and my bills are free. That's financial freedom for me. Mm-hmm. And it may be to a lot of other people. You get what I'm saying yeah. about that? Yeah. So, I guess in the sense of whatever that is entails. It sounds like you just want you want time to have leisure, right? Time of leisure. It's the time. It's like basically having the power to pick what I want to do, right? But you just, I mean, unless you're going to be like, if, unless you're going to be, for example, like a Twitch player or like a, a YouTube, then that's going to be like a whole career. You can build it up while you're doing your career also. But when I say financial freedom, like how much money do you think you actually need per month to actually be good? Like two, three thousand dollars? Four thousand dollars? Not a lot. Need a that's lot. good so let's yeah. say three thousand dollars right i'm a conservative person yeah and that's fine right so yeah I didn't, I didn't hear no lambo i didn't hear none of that stuff and and that's fine so you <laughs> you don't gotta rush this whole thing man so if what you want it's like like i said right if you find a job that you like and you love it and you're able to invest and build up to it and then you're done paying your home and all this stuff your expenses are so low to the point where if you want to spend two thousand dollars on video games or or going to conferences and all the stuff you can if you want to but it's all about getting there so you got to have your own picture of what exactly it is that you want and then work towards it okay that's interesting all right yeah because i i have picked up this whole other like i ain't gonna lie to me i've been on my social media stuff too like the last two weeks i've been yeah and marketing, I'm I'm all over the place. You feel me? I'm over yeah, here. Yeah, you you are just trying different things out. You're trying to see what yeah. sticks. But yeah. you can do all that trying thing out on the side the while you build a career. And one yeah. thing is, right, the best lesson that I learned is that the people that came before you have a lot more knowledge than you do. Right? So what I would do is if you want to learn about something, just pick one thing while you get in a career. And just buy all the books on the experts on that stuff. And just basically start reading. When I wanted to learn about finance, I bought all the finance books. And I basically dedicated myself just to finance. And I learned about it as most as I possibly could. But you you gotta you, you can't be scattered. Because what scatters means basically you're undecisive. And if you're undecisive, you'll get what life gives you and not what you want out of it. Wow, that was deep. Yeah, <laughs> that was the, <deep. laughs> but, <laughs> but it's true, man. That that that's really it. Really is what it is. You know what I mean? So, so just to summarize everything, Randall. Um, what I would do is I'm 28 years old. I'm gonna make a list of my top 10 careers, and I'm just gonna pick one and focus on it. If I have an idea about something, because you seem like an idea guy, I will try that on my off time, which you probably won't have a lot of, honestly. Once you have a full like a job and also like your career that you're actually trying to get. And I'll just dedicate 18 months to it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, I'll give you I'll give you a little um, module when it comes to um, picking a side hustle, right? Mm-hmm. You want to look for three things. Um, the first is something that you like. You want to write this down. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing everything down. Everything's getting written down. The second thing is something that you're good at. Okay. Okay. And the third thing is it's also going to make you money. Gotcha. Now, here's how this works, right? If it doesn't make you money, it's a hobby. If you don't like it, you'll be miserable. And on top of that, if you're not good at it, you're going to be mediocre, which will not make you any money. So I love singing. I'm not good at it, so I can't make money out of it, right? I like playing video games also, but I don't make money out of it, so it's basically a hobby. But that doesn't mean, for example, I can't pursue it. So what I mean is if you're going to do the whole career thing and you want to do a side hustle, Give it at least 18 months to see what happens out of it. And make sure you actually like it and you're good at all that stuff, right? So if for you that's playing 2K or playing whatever video games you actually play, play, I mean, just um use your um whatever you have, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and start making videos online about it. If it works out, it works out. But guess what? If it doesn't work out, you're still having fun doing it. And it's not like you need the money because you'll have a career in a few years. Or in a few months, depending on what you choose to do. I bet. I could definitely do that. Yeah, and then every time you say yes to something, remember, Randall, you're saying no to something else. 
So when I tell you, yo, Randall, let's go, let's go, um, let's go to the beach, right? You're saying no to staying at home and reading a book. If you're, if I tell you, yo, Randall, let's do like this forest trading, you're saying no to doing your career or whatever. So don't take every opportunity that comes your way. That's, that's, um, that's not what it seems to be. Okay. So be more selective what you give your time to. And every time you say yes, it's usually going to be a distraction. So just buckle down on those two things, career and either playing video games, whatever like um, hustle you choose to do. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you can guarantee with your research that your career is going to work out. Okay? And pick yeah. a career you like, bro. Like, you got to like it. That's why last time you, 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 you probably dropped out because you didn't know what the heck you wanted to do. But doing this type of research and spending this type of time, You'll know exactly all the details about it, all the ins and outs. Yeah. And and when I'm getting this career, when I'm going mm-hmm. to school, I got to pick up a job to do while I'm doing this, right? Like, it's not... Yeah, you got to you gotta pick up a job because you got to stay productive and you got to stay... Um, you can't have too much free time because you're going to go crazy. But you got to stay productive because you're going to need, for example, money to pay for your expenses. You'll need money to pay for school. So you can grab... You want to set yourself up like, forget about you right now. You'll have fun right now doing whatever you do. But picture yourself at age 32. You want to worry about that guy, right, the most. And you also want to make sure that you, yourself right now, is also happy doing what you want to do. All right, it's like a balance. But I'm not saying that you're going to find the perfect side job right now that you're going to love. No, you might do some job that you don't like at all. Like, I did a lot of those. But I had the mindset that I was like, I'm doing this to get money to do eventually what I actually want to do. And that kept me going. So you got a job to pay for school. So 32-year-old you graduates without any loans and just has a lot more opportunities. Yeah, that makes more sense, man. What's your current situation? Who do you live with? Me? Bro, I'm back and forth between my crib, my mom's crib, and my shorty's crib, man. Yeah, you need you need I, some balance, I, man. If I, I I left out a big a big you know and I, and I probably did this I don't know about mistake that but I got a kid on the way too, man. Like I got a lot going on. February, okay. yeah. So, so that's in February of, and twenty eight, and then a kid. Look, man. Yeah, so that's a big part, right? So if I got a kid on the way, and girlfriend, you know, potentially getting married and all this stuff, you know, to just have everything in order. The answer is I'll take things seriously, right? So that means I'll probably be looking more into trade jobs, things I can do and get it very quickly, very fast. You know, the good thing about trade jobs is basically you can get a trade job in one year or two years, but you also get paid while you're being like um like mentored, mm-hmm. right? So that's income you can actually make ASAP too. And there's a lot of different trade jobs, you know? It's not just, for example, like the plumbers and there are also like linemen. There's also like the IT stuff. This is a lot of like a lot of jobs out there. You, you get one of those, you know, and if you pick something that's actually just a little bit longer, like two, three years, that's fine. But you'll need, for example, also to work. Right. So you got the work. You also got the career for the vision. And then once the kid is coming into play, you got your own apartment with your girl. She works. You work. You guys take care of the kid. Yeah. And you turn the, the girlfriend from a girlfriend to, to, to a wife. You take wife. things seriously. Yeah. And don't don't get overwhelmed, man. The reason you're overwhelmed is because you haven't written down anything on paper. So your yo, brain how do you know that, yo, bro. How do you know that, bro? That's so <laughs> yo, bro. <laughs> how do you know that, bro? Your brain's scattered, bro. You can hear it. You're not oh. special, bro. Like this happens to all of us. That's why that's why I'm telling you all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So the point is write down whatever problems you're having and then just create a plan for it. And whatever plan you decide, feel free to pivot. But don't pivot off of like, oh, I heard this Forex thing or I heard about this day trading thing. Take it seriously. You got a kid on the way, right? It's the most important thing you're probably ever going to have in your whole life. So career-wise, money-wise, I'll pick a career. Here's my career. Side hustle-wise, I'll do this. My job-wise to make income and come in, I'm going to do this. You know, I think I'm... A, where do you live, by the way? What state do you live in? Um, Jersey. North Jersey. Bro. They're so, you know, you know, you know, Amazon, they're paying like $20 per hour now. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do Amazon $20 per hour. And then at night you're going to school. Yeah. For real. Grow up. Right? It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. 
It's not, bro, it's not growing up. This is this is like the best part because like you're getting like the whole the the past the past ten years, right? Eighteen to plus eight, that's ten. The past ten years, you've kind of just like been just like figuring things out. But now it's like the exciting part because now you actually putting everything together, right? So it's the best right. time. So now you can do the Amazon thing. That's twenty dollars per hour. So you know, yo, I can. That's like an easy two thousand dollars per month, most likely to three thousand dollars per month. If my girl works also and she makes like two thousand dollars, that's easily you know four thousand to five thousand dollars per month. We can bring into one into one household. It's a lot of money. You get a good apartment. You tell her, yeah, I'm gonna be going to school too. So we're gonna put our income towards me graduating fully. So that way, if you want to stay home, you can stay home if you want to. Like it's not as complicated as you think. Like the and by the way, just because you know the answers, it doesn't make it any more easier. You still got to make the choices every single day. That's the hard part. Like, you know, Amazon, okay, that's one job. You know, school, that's the career thing. But it doesn't mean you're going to do it. Just like, you know, eating healthy, going to the gym makes you healthy. You know, everybody would have a six a six pack of every, everybody did it. You know, so the truth is not always like as simple as it is. You know the truth now, which is great. But now it's time to put into action and build healthy habits. Okay. Oh, I gotta start with the notebook though, right? I gotta go get this, this notebook, man. Nah, don't right. don't complicate don't don't complicate <laughs> this, bro. Just get you got an iPhone or you got an Android? I got an iPhone. Pull out the yeah, notes. pull up the notes. Pull up the okay. notes and start just writing everything down. If you got a piece of paper around, pull it up and you write everything down. You gotta have vision. So write down exactly what do you see when you're thirty two years old, right? Thirty two year old you can have a full time job. You can have a wife. You can have a three-year-old, four-year-old by that time. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Before you and, go, because I know I'm about to, I know I'm about to lose your four minutes too. I gotta yeah. wait till my child is born to open up the custodial account, right? Don't worry about that. Don't worry. Yeah. You see how I'll be in the future, bro? Like. Yeah, but don't worry about that. Just, just focus on your income first. Ooh. When, when, yeah, when, when the steps come into play. Step one: debt free. Step two, security, save for emergencies. Step three, you start investing 10, 20%. If you want to invest 5% for a child's 529 account for education purposes, you can also do that simultaneously. And then while you're also saving up for that 10 to 20% down payment for a home, the home you buy, make sure you don't go overboard because it'll just put you in a bad place. Yeah. And I'm guessing, and I'm guessing, for example, the good thing is, right, once you bury yourself, for example, and either like audiobooks or books or just going to work and going to school, it'll switch also your proximity to your current friends that most likely are just like you. So you'll start to upgrade your relationships, which will then most likely also upgrade you. Because you gotta be selective also with the people you give your time to. Yeah. Okay. So for right Thank now, you. that's what I'm doing. If you gotta if you if you gotta if you gotta um if you got to be at your mom's house and drop a few dollars on her in the meantime, while you save up the money to get the apartment with your girl and potentially get her like a little wedding ring for like 500 bucks and all that stuff, that'll be awesome. Okay. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. All right, you brother. You like to hear that part, though. <laughs> you you, you didn't put me in some, you know what I mean? But, yo, appreciate yeah. it, bro. Thank you so appreciate much. I appreciate you, man. I just want to let you know, bro, um, these are not like a one-time call things. If you want to call back, feel free to do so um, and schedule a free call, man. I want to see exactly what you decide to do and everything, man. Welcome to the long-term team. Always think the long-term, not just today. You're going to be around for a long time, man, so get things in order, okay? I appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. Have a great right. day, brother. All right. You also, brother. Peace out. All right, guys, so that right there was Ashley Randolph, you know, and what a great conversation, right? And, you know, in reality... Again, I always say this, you know, but the truth and the answers, people think that once they know exactly what to do, it's going to make things a lot more easier. But it is, right? But when you think about it, I'm giving somebody a plan, not for like, oh, it's, you're going to do this, Randall, and like, baby, like, tomorrow you're going to be this and that. No, it's like a, a long-term plan, right? It takes a while. And you got to erase this mentality to tell people that, if that if they're not entrepreneurs or they're not making money on their own all this stuff that they're losers it's not true you know get a career careers are awesome you know you want to find by the way there's this whole thing on the internet on the media on on movies everywhere like 
the person that's always in that job, that's the person that's not happy. Then they get their own business. Now they're happy. They're always a loser. It's not true. You can have a job that you actually like, you enjoy, you're actually good at, also pays you great money, has great benefits. That's what you're looking for. You're not looking for those old jobs that your mom and dad took that basically they did it because they had to. And by the way, nothing wrong with that. But today we have a lot more opportunities, right? So take advantage of them. Pick a career that you actually like that can make you a good amount of money. Stop thinking that, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do Forex trading. I'm going to do um, individual stock picking. I'm going to do index fund investing when you're broke, right? Don't do that because your income is going to help you build wealth. And if your income is unpredictable, you are going to have a problem. If you have a baby on the way, potential wife on the way, those things right there take priority over everything. So what am I doing? Let me get this job. Try to get this job at Amazon, right? That's 20 bucks an hour. That's a lot of money, right? So 20 bucks per hour now. Okay, that's $2,000, $3,000 per month. That's enough for me to save up money um, to get an apartment, to get a little wedding ring, to get um, eloped, to actually get married, bring my kid into a nice family, all this stuff, to just do everything in order, right? And then, for example, I'm with this girl, we live together, she works, I work, maybe my mom helps with the whole baby because his mom seems to be like um, pretty active there and helps him out also. That'll be awesome too, right? And now you're just working, getting your career. Two, three years later, you're through with Amazon, great. You have a full career now, it makes you 40,000, 60,000, $80,000, whatever it is. And now you're telling, hey, you know what? We're able to do this, able to do that. We can buy our own house, we can pay it off. That's what's cool. That's what I like. You know, that's the story I'm looking forward to hearing. And if midway through that, you're like, Tommy, guess what? My Twitch streaming or my gaming streaming actually took off. And now all of a sudden, I'm making $20,000 per month or, or per year off of this stuff, right? I'm like, okay, keep doing that. That's awesome. If you want to quit, just make sure you have strong confidence in that income stream. And you also have at least six to 12 months worth of emergencies. Well, 12 months in this case, because basically, it's more like a side hustle that might not end up that great. But that way, like you have, you have security. And you're like, I'll do this now because it, it worked out for me. But you got to get rid of this impatient mentality. And if you guys can tell, right, when I'm talking to someone, they're like, how do you know that? How do you know this? How do you know that? Because I am you, right? Everything you're saying, I went through, except for the kid and stuff like that. But everything you're saying, I went through also. I'm very, well, I was very impatient. I've become a very patient person. I'm working towards that. And be careful with the language you use for yourself. I was very impatient. I was very scattered minded. I did not write down my goals. I did not write down my tasks. I did not do any of that stuff. Stuff. And in result, I was just all over the place and it showed. Well, guys, that is it for this episode. If you want to join me on my next call, feel free to do so. The link is down below to schedule a call today. On top of that, also like, subscribe, hit the bell to so get notified. And if you guys want to talk to me one on one, well, just DM me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. Or for example, if you want to watch another episode, here's a other episode right here. Click my face right here. And as always, thanks for watching and peace.